Yeah, so for example, uh, to demonstrate that, here I have a controller. Uh, this controller is saying that it uses the chain code transaction. And what this types in here, uh, which by the way, this import comes from, from Vector Platform Fabric, is just give you access to their direct APIs from, from Fabric when this is invoked in a chain code. So for example, if you go is that PX, uh, you will get uh, this stop property and the stop property uh, pretty much have access to pretty much all the methods inside Fabric. So this is this is not an API from us, from Convector itself. This is an API directly from Fabric. So uh, at the day of tomorrow, when they release another method, you can, if, if Convector doesn't give you a, a shortcut to access this method, you can access it right away without us having to make any release to support that directly. Uh, but we do uh, generate some shortcuts for you uh, because there are some certain things that really are hard to, to do with the public SDK. At the end, what Convector does is abstracting all these uh, complexities uh, from the from the public SDK. So you can just focus on what you actually want to do. And for example, private data is a, is a pretty well uh, example for to demonstrate this. Uh, for example, on private data, when you want to when you want to work with private data, uh, you the, at the time that you send the first transaction to get the data into the actually private collection, you don't actually want to send this data in the public transaction fields because those transactions will get populated to all the networks. So even if you are storing that data in a private collection that is only accessible to certain peers, uh, the the transaction that got this data into the blockchain will be public to all the other nodes. So you want to avoid this. And this is uh, accomplishing fabric by using a transient field. A transient field is a special field in the when you send a transaction that is hidden to all the members and just the ones that uh, they are allowed to, to read them. Uh, for example, in this case, if we, want to, if we want to access this transient data, what we do is this that tx that get transient value, and we just pass uh, the value that we want to read and a formatter for this value. So in this case, this formatter is a model, actually. If I go and click here, uh, I will get access to a model. So uh, what I'm expecting in this scenario is that someone sends me a transient data with a name called marble, and that this data has to be with this shape. Uh, so just like this, I got to access to the transient data. But to do this uh, using the Fabric APIs, you actually have to do like uh, like uh, converting buffers to strings and then converting the strings to the model. And actually to get access to the transient data, you have to call like two or three methods uh, using the Fabric SDK. Uh, with, with Convector, you can just do that easily with just a single line. Same thing when saving private data, you just call. So we generate a new model called Marble, and we put just populate the fields of this model. We, and just like we do regularly for any other data that we want to save in Fabric. And when we call dot save, in instead of just uh, leave this uh, empty, like you regularly do uh, on a regular save, you just put the private collection where you want to store this, and that's it. Uh, this is this is quickly you just support a private data, which is a really hot feature in Fabric right now, in just seconds without doing too much. Uh, it's really convenient. There is there is a lot of examples like like this. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to, for example, get uh, get a collection, get a data from the private collection, you just do the same. You do a get one, which is something you regularly do uh, on 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 convectors uh, right now. You pass the idea of what you want to to store, and you got to pass the formatter, and you got the private collection where you store this. So it's pretty it's pretty easy to do. Um, and like examples like this, we have uh, some more examples. I think I have some working progress in here. Let me take a look. I think those are in our branch. Uh, yeah, I, I think Diego, that this is a great example of what we were talking before about that you could do this directly with the fabric apis without uh depending on us adding new uh, layers in here but we do things much easier we try to listen to what the community is asking for and we try to make things more feel more uh you know more modern in, in terms of how you develop and what you are expecting in the api you know have a better developer experience but you could have done this before without without the, the convector changes. 
Uh, it's happening the same with events. That is something that we will be adding support uh, later in, in the following months. Uh, but again, you can use the API directly or you can work through these, uh, these helpers that make things uh, you know, richer to use, right? Yeah, correct. So, uh, just to give you an example of the counterpart of how you consume these uh, private data features, is uh, this is a unit test. This is a photo that is packed. Uh, and the way that you interact with this uh, trends in data that I showed you previously uh, on the spec is you call it product controller. It's a product controller is a, con a, con a convector controller client. Uh, it's a new client factory that we created. Uh, and you just pass this, that config. Uh, so the, the convector controller doesn't have actually a method call so, such as that. So if I go to the controller again, I just get a method call in Marvel, read Marvel, and read my little private data set, details. Uh, but this has this kind of a special methods that start with a dollar. For example, config is one of them, uh, where you can just pass configuration to the adapters and in this uh, transaction. And where, in this case, we're passing a transient value uh, that the convector adapter for fabric will take and take a special treatment over this value and send uh, the transient data properly. So in this case, we're sending a marble, which, if we remember correctly, was a marble transient input, right? Here in the controller, um, yeah, it was a marble transient input, the one that we were expecting, and it's a, tr a marble transient input, the one that we're sending. Uh, and we just this, uh, we call init marble, the intended method that we want to call, which is this one, init, init marble. And the transaction will go away with this configuration, having in mind. So it's, uh, it's uh, really pretty convenient methods. 